Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning us in. Wherever it is you're ushering in the new year tonight, we're just an hour away from closing the door on another year. And for the Canucks, the end couldn't come soon enough. 1995 featured a lockout, a second-round playoff loss, a knee injury that'll keep number 96 out until late 96, and a start to the season that is well below expectations. But before turning the page over to a new year, the Canucks had one last kick at the can. Over at the garage against Eric Lindros and the Philadelphia Flyers, not just one, but two Elvi taken in the Canucks and Flyers. And they saw some great goaltending. Early McLean robs Russ Romanuk on the power play. But Romanuk would get his revenge just about a minute later. He is loose in front. Let's go. Nice pass by Patty Falloon. It's 1-0 Philly. But the Canucks answer back a short time later. Watch Trevor Linden goes to the net, takes out Hextall. McGillney puts the puck in. No call from Paul Dvorsky. He said Linden was pushed in. Hextall not too happy. Goal stands 1-1. Second period. All flyers. Desjardins with the shot. Leclerc with the screen. 2-1 Philly. Some decent hitting in the middle period as well. Cliff Ronning gets rubbed out by Chris Terrian, but Ronning goes right back at the Flyers defenseman. And then look at Russ Courtnell off the top rope. Mean Gene Okerlund would have loved that one. Third period, 3-1 Flyers, but Yerke Lume pulls Vancouver back within one. Nice effort there, 3-2 with just under 19 minutes to go. But Lume goes from hero to goat. Bad break here, puck goes in off his skate. Give it to Chris Terrian. Flyers up 5-2, but just when you thought they were down and out, back came the Canucks. Russ Courtnell on the power play, 5-3. Then Kirk McLean at the other end will come up with the big stop on Sean Podine right there. Still, the Canucks are down two. They were shorthanded, so that's when Rick Lee decided to pull the goal. He was gambling. Desperation move, yes, but lo and behold, it worked. McGillney to Zelina. And with two minutes to go, the Canucks were down by just one, which leads to our fantastic finish brought to you by the fine folks at Alcoa. Watch the clock. Time running out. Loose puck in front, buried by McGillney. Oh, baby, what a finish. Five seconds to go. Canucks salvage a 5-5 tie. At least the Canucks lead the league in at least one category. They're the first team to double digits in draws. Yay team. We'll have more on this game later in the show, including, of course, some post-game locker room comments. Saddle Dome. Flames taking their crack at the Rangers, doing better than the Canucks and the Oilers did. Michael Nylander makes it one nothing early. And Nylander was not done yet. Calgary on a power play midway through the first. Titov's shot will be stopped in the slot, but look who's Johnny on the spot. Michael Nylander. 2 nothing. Flames. Pierre Paget obviously ecstatic by this turn of events. And it could have been worse for the Rangers if not for Glenn Healy. Great stop there on Phil Housley. Then he gets Emerson with the toe. Two big stops. And Trevor Kidd wasn't too shabby either. Glove save on Graves. Kidd would stop 27 shots. Only one got by him. Mark Messier doing the deed in the second period. That's his 25th of the campaign. It was 2-1. Meanwhile, the Glenn Healy show continued. Big stop on Tergaya. Then... Great chance here for Steve Chase on, but Healy gets him with the glove. Flames go on to win this thing 3-1. You know, I think Mark Messier is getting a little tired of losing in Calgary. The Rangers winless at the Saddle Dome since 1987. I was in high school. Theron Fleury rounds out the scoring for the Flames as they end the Rangers' six-game unbeaten streak. Mike Richter missed this game for New York after injuring his groin last night in Edmonton. At